So phase two of the Celestial Anomaly was just released, and you know, it's got some major differences, and we'll talk about some of that. But it doesn't look like it's dependent on a specific legendary Esper, like phase one was with Mateo. The biggest difference is the verdict mechanic, which basically allows you to do true damage after you do a certain number of hits to the enemy. And this damage is based on the enemy's HP, so you may want to consider it kind of like a Pandora's box or a poison effect. So this may change in the future, but at the current time, like up to floor 60, it seems like you can use your bossing team to actually do the floors as well, as long as both are like controller oriented. This makes it feel like the Void Messenger might actually be easier than the Wither Messenger, but again, we'll have to find out later if that ends up being true. So this is the team I'm using, and it's just like Epic Espers, and Event Espers, and Fusion Espers. So it should be something that you're more likely to have. If you don't have Yamato yet, you should go ahead and kick over like Long Mian or Meredith into the speed slot, because you really want the extra speed on your team, and then use a buff blocker that has an AoE like Chloe. I'm a huge fan of Long Mian. His speed break is very important, and being able to use that with Meredith creates such a speed difference between your teams. It really does change the game a lot. Now, Gabrielle adds a lot of survivability in your team, as well as being able to stun, which is just useful. If you don't have her, I would probably use someone else who has an AoE stun. So probably someone like Parmi, or Daniel, or the Medusa. If you are a new or mid-game player, fuse Apollo, resonate him up, and use him. He is really fantastic. So this is floor 59, and it's actually really easy with this team. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, because you don't really want to see all that. But it's just reliable, and this is actually the bossing team as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you floor 60 now, and kind of get an idea of how that works. For me, the speed difference that's created by using Long Mian with Meredith is just fantastic. It really makes everything easier. With Gabrielle and Yamato, you're going to have a lot of like additional tankiness to your team that's going to make these fights feel better. And this is why we use Apollo, being able to stun out the little minions, being able to just AoE lock them or reduce their gauge with Long Mian, it's just, it's just a great form of control for this whole fight. So I think you get it. You just basically increase your survivability, do AoEs, and those AoEs will eventually just do enough true damage to kill the boss. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to the end, and then we're going to look at my Chimera team, which is a lot more interesting. So as you can see, we're not really close to dying. We got some sustainability. It's really not much of an issue at all. And then the AoE is what clears everything for you. So like I said, this works now, and it'll probably work for a while. I imagine that we're going to need to use some sort of different mechanic on like floor 110, like we did for the last messenger boss, so we'll see how that goes. There are already a number of differences, the main one being that you're going to have two teams running at the same time. The top team is the one that I used in my previous video with the addition of Unis because I was able to get him, so I feel really lucky now. But the fifth slot is always up for grabs. So the second team is far more interesting, and it uses um, a couple fun tricks. So I'm going to explain them, and hopefully you can go ahead and use this team as a skeleton and build one that works for you. I think everyone knows that YC at Resonance 2 is extremely strong. But there are a couple reasons why he's actually stronger here than he may be in other places. So when he marks an enemy, and someone else goes and attacks that enemy, He'll follow up with his dog, doing an additional hit. Against this boss, when you kill one of the little minions, they actually lose all the debuffs they have applied to them, so the mark falls off, leaving only the boss with the mark left. This means that whenever you do an AoE, YC will follow up on an attack against the boss, and you'll build to 100 stacks really fast. So I'm working on making that a bit more consistent, and I'll have to play around with it. Now we're using Ashley, because her passive, the Rainbow Bridge, applies true damage when you crit. The reason why this is important is because there's a passive that allows you to apply additional sacks if you do true damage to the boss. Then if we're using Heimdall, who has attack up, the best person to go with her is actually going to be Unki Chai. So Unki Chai will reduce the cooldowns of any Esper uh, when he goes to apply his attack up if they already have an attack up. 
This gives us so much more uptime on our skills two and three, and basically just lets us do so much more area attacks that he's amazing in the setup. It shouldn't be surprising that we're using Flower Girl because she's really, really good at doing area effect damage. But we're actually really using her for her element. You see, she's a purple esper, and the minions that are summoned by the boss, they're all green. So that means they're all gonna target her, which is great because we can set her up on her counter set, and at Resonance 6, she automatically counters anyone who's already under the effect of Nether Bloom. So that's basically just free damage. Then lastly, we had to choose a healer, and Clara is probably one of the best, if not the best. She gives immunity, she cleanses the annoying bleed debuffs we'll be getting from the boss, she also boosts up the gauge, and provides a shield. And on counterattack, she's also really good. So those are the teams, and we'll look and see how they perform. We're already starting off strong by setting up with the attack up, shield, basically everything. And reducing the cooldown is also really useful. Now we'll see something pretty interesting here. And that's when the boss first gets the mark applied by YC. Pretty much all the espers will attack just the boss. And I'm not really sure why this is in the beginning, but it's extremely useful to get stacks. So we're just going to abuse this mechanic as much as possible to get a higher score. One of the most annoying things is that our other team is still going in the fight, so for some reason it slows down when this team takes their turns. And I'm not sure why that is. I can only think it's that way they like synchronize better, but I'm not really sure. You may also notice that against this boss we only have 150 turns. And that can be really annoying, because that means that we can't basically just do speed builds, we'll have to do a lot of damage, which is why we're using YC as a lead. I think this makes YC more crucial than he should be, because we basically have a smaller window to do damage in, and every assist he does is just extra free damage. So I think I've explained pretty much everything that I can, there's nothing left but to see it. So I'm going to speed up the video, and kick on some music, and I'll see you at the end. Well, this about wraps it up. You can see the last few turns here. We're about to hit a turn timer. Unfortunately, Flower Girl died. So I probably need to make her a bit tankier than what I had shown. And our other team held up well. So that's a pretty decent score, I think. But we're going to go ahead and check the leaderboards and just see how we do in the division. And that'll get us a better understanding of where we're at. Well, it looks like it did pretty well. But we gotta take some things into consideration before we define this as like the best team or anything.
The mechanics and tricks that I use were great, but there are two teams involved, and that can mean that my first team is outperforming the other first teams in my league. So the scoring may be slightly skewed. And the second thing is, I mean, there's a ton of the passive tree that's still locked. And there could be a lot of different teams that evolve over time. But luckily, I'll be around to test it and see. And I'll let you know. So as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more of this content, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.